hello. Sorry I'm late. Um, who can I blame it on this time? Margo, who can I blame it on? Bathing suit shopping? I think I'll do bathing suit shopping. I'll take bathing suit shopping for the win. Um, no, but uh, no, I have had a <laughs> crazy day, but it ended on a high note, so that's good. Um, I don't know if um, tonight... And I have to uh, ask, and Margo, you may ask, because I forgot to ask before I left, if Sharon wanted to come on and talk to the Ramblers after I'm done with the true crime. Would you ask her that for me, please? Because uh, I think she was going to do it last night, and then she fell asleep. So maybe she wants to do it tonight when I'm done, and I only have a couple of uh, stories that I'm going to do, and then um, she may want to talk to them. So... You can ask her and let me know, all right, please? Thank you. Uh oh, I almost I almost shut you down. That would be very, very bad. Very bad. Okay. So tonight we're gonna talk about that Hawaiian murder suicide, high lovely lyrics. And um, we find a little bit more bit about the family. The father was a chiropractor. Apparently he was depressed for months before this. Um and by, by this, I mean before killing his wife. Hi, farm wife. How are you doing? Before, um, oh, she will? Okay. Tell her to be ready. And when I get done with these two stories, I will have her come up. Uh, so I will tell you that Sharon has something important she would like to discuss with you guys and let you in on because um, she'd like to, you know, uh, let you know what's going on and then of course you know get the support prayers love uh, from the community that's so abundant here so that would be great hi tree dog hi sherry um so he was apparently uh depressed for months before doing this and then we're going to talk about 60 hi white angel 60 new yeah, I know. I'm thinking of you, farm wife. Believe me, I'm really thinking of you, especially today. I was going through uh, a lot of uh, ups and downs with that kind of stuff that you're going through. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, Madeline Soto, her stepfather, Stefan. 60 new charges, okay? So... We still haven't seen the charges on the mother, even though somebody told me yesterday, oh, the mother was arrested or something, but I better check that out. Well, I don't see that yet. And I've been like totally preoccupied today with a bunch of things I had to do. Um, but I didn't, I looked when I got uh, home. So let, let's, let's talk about these two stories and then we'll have Sharon come on and talk to you guys, okay? All right. So let me just go over here and oh and there's one other thing too there's this tremendous organized theft ringleader out in California who for 10 years has been um, having this little uh, army of uh, shoplifters go into stores like Ulta, Bed Bath & Beyond and other stores like that and then steal a whole bunch of merchandise which she would then sell on Amazon for profit and she was living in a multi-million dollar house and they stole um, nearly eight million dollars in makeup from stores across the country in certain states it was like Florida, it was Massachusetts, Ohio, California um, just to name a few and uh, well they were busted right and now the uh, Attorney General in California is you know going to prosecute that and then there is some video of that college student that disappeared from that Luke Bryan bar and it has him going across the sidewalk but let's talk about the new charges first in the Madeline Soto case and then we shall uh, go over here let's see here so the attorney, uh, the state attorney's office lobbied, um, levied, excuse me, 
60 additional criminal charges against Stefan Stearns, and that is Madeline Soto's step, uh, not her stepfather, her mother's boyfriend. Sorry, I might have called him his stepfather because they, they refer to him as the stepfather in some things, but they were not married. He is the boyfriend of Madeline Soto's mother, and he's facing charges including S battery of children under 12, S battery of children 12 to 18, lewd and uh, vicious molestation and possession of child S abuse materials. And that's according to the Osceola County Court documents. He has not yet directly been charged with Madeline's death. The new charges, so we're going to just take a look at some of the new charges here. They are just, there's 60 new charges and they are, a lot of them are uh, repeats. So let's see, he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, he has 8 charges of S battery on a child under 12. And then he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 on uh, S battery with a child 12 to 18. And then for the lewd molestation, he's got one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. And then unlawful possession of materials depicting S performance by a child, um, 10 or more images. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now I'm losing 13, 14. He's got multiple. Okay. Yeah. He's got multiple. He's probably, he's got over 20, over 25. He's got, yeah, that's a lot. Um, so they, uh, levied that on him and it just goes through there. Count 22, count 24, count 26. So a lot of new uh, charges for him with all that stuff, but still not the murder charge, right? That everybody's waiting for. So that uh, should be, I bet you that'll be coming. I just want to get to that. Now let me go to our Hawaii case here. And do, do, do. Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Okay. Here's the family that is, you know, they're no longer alive. They're no longer alive because the father in that family. Uh, stabbed his wife and the three children then himself on Sunday. He had no prior history of violence. His name Paris Oda and he he was 46 and he killed his wife Naoko 48. There are two daughters Sakuraka Sakurako and Nana ages 17 and 10, and their 12-year-old son, Orion. Paris reportedly worked as a chiropractor, and his wife occasionally worked with him at his clinic. He had no history of violence, but they had been in debt in recent years, and records indicated that the office building owners sued him and his company in 2021 for $90,000 in back rent. For three years, it went back and was unpaid. Later that year, Paris agreed to pay the company $57,000 in, in two installments, and a former and current employee of his said that Paris was happy and liked to talk to his patients until late last year. His employees also claimed that he was still dealing with financial issues at the time of his death, and they said, and I quote, he had depression because he had just totally changed. No smiling, nothing. Sometimes he looked so grouchy said an employee. I'm kind of scared to talk uh, to talking to him because he seems a really unhappy person. On Sunday, the Honolulu police reportedly got an anonymous call about an argument. And when they arrived at the residence, no one answered. 
And then after another call was placed 45 minutes later, officers discovered the five bodies inside. A knife was recovered at the scene and police are still investigating on the motive in this case. So yeah, some pretty um, stuff. That so he, you know, again, I, a very permanent solution for something that probably, uh, I'm, I'm sure, you know, could have been worked out, okay? Uh, so he, what, would have to declare bankruptcy, move somewhere where the cost of living is cheaper, you know, things like that. But not, uh, this shouldn't be, oh, let me just, you know, kill us all. Uh, but that's the way it goes. So I am going to go back. Don't get scared now. I'm going to go back into the other Zoom just so that it's easier for me to just um, get up there. So I'm going to leave this meeting. Don't worry. I'll be right back. I'm coming back. I'm just going to go into the Zoom and I'll be right back. People in the Zoom, you're going to be live. Okay. There we go. Open my Zoom. Okay, let's see. I'm going to stay the call. I'm going to do that. Get up there. So I'm going to leave this meeting. Don't worry, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to move that. And let's see. So hang on. Let me. Okay, so let me get Sharon up here too. Okay, and then we can add pin. Okay, so let me see. So get to the chat. So Sharon, do you want to tell the Ramblers what's yeah. going on? Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I uh, first I want to tell you all to go get your mammograms, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I was recently diagnosed with breast cancer, and I just got my port in yesterday, and I'm going to be starting chemo, and it's supposedly the worst stuff in the in the world, um, and I'll probably need about a year's worth of um, treatment. So I just thought, you know, if I could get a few extra prayers, I'd really appreciate it, because yeah. it's scary. It is yeah, it scary. is scary. And you were, I mean, you had been getting regular mammograms, right? Uh, yeah. I'm, and even I'm ultrasounds. Lucky. Absolutely. But this is a very aggressive form. Um, so I'm still stage one. Mm -hmm. It's not in the pit. Um, right. And I hope it doesn't get there. Yeah. Because every 160 days, this doubles in size. And the interesting thing about what I've got is this, that it can't be felt. So you need you really do need to go and get a mammogram. And if you have dense breasts like I do, get an ultrasound mammogram. Mm -hmm. Insist on it. Insist on an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And when the, the radiologist who read my first mammogram said everything was great. No problem. See you in 2025. Three days later, she came back and said, hold on, something's not right here. I don't know what made her come back to it. I'm thankful that she did. I'd sure like to ask her what made her come back to mine. Mm -hmm. um, because if it had been another year, I could have been stage four and on my last legs. So all things considered, I'm super lucky that she turned around and came back. Right, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've just been doing steady parade of doctors. Like I said, I got my port in yesterday. Um, so that's what's going on with me. In case anybody's wondered why I'm pretty low key absent, oh, I, I keep falling asleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Maybe yeah, I never got tired, and now I'm tired. Yeah. And um, you go to the doctor tomorrow? Yeah. Another. Yes. Yes, I do in the end. And I see another one on Thursday, and I'm waiting to hear from the oncologist to see if I have to go get an echocardiogram. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to be on a chemo that's it's adriamycin. It's also called uh, robo something or another. But anyway, it's its nickname is the Red Devil. So if you want to look up the Red Devil and see what it is, it's really bad. Good. And Ashley says she's making a mammo appointment online right now. Good for good for you. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody, do it. Mm hmm. You never know. You never know. Right. This is just between mammograms, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, I'm on it, Sharon. I'll be praying for you. White Angel said, "I wish you nothing but the best." Thank you. I appreciate it. And. Um, yeah, I, I mean, um, it's scary stuff. Yeah. I haven't really cried yet. I don't understand what's wrong with me, but oh. yeah, maybe 10 seconds for it. That's it. It's okay. We gotta get this done. We gotta get this gone. Right. I told him in the Zoom that I was tempted to search YouTube for do-it-yourself surgery. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> there was a lady that did something like that on her implant she was on. I think it was Oh not, my not, goodness. Not really? Dr. Phil. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. It was a long that. no, I am not. Um, she did it. It wasn't that. Um, it was remember when they had the silicone implants and they used to show pictures of them and they were deteriorating? Like oh, yeah. they almost like they had a foam on them and they were deteriorating in people's mm -hmm. bodies and then they were getting all kinds of illnesses from them. Well, it was, who was it? It was a Phil Donahue show or something. And the woman was wow. so freaked out by it because she was feeling so sick and she couldn't get an appointment that she tried to take her own breast implants out in her bathroom. Oh my, oh my God. goodness. And she did, she like, she, I think she was successful. I hope she showed up at the hospital to get so back up easily. Um, because she was so freaked out because they were like, it was, I still remember what they looked like. They were just deteriorating. I'm, I'm going to be getting reconstruction. I'm having a double mastectomy and I'm getting a uh, reconstruction. It'll be probably a couple months after the double mastectomy and it's called a D-I-E-P-D. And they take the, I don't want implants. They take it from your tummy and they move it up top and they hook up the uh, blood supply and all that. And hello, you know, and I said, I'll, I'll have the perkiest boobs in the nursing home, so that's cool. <laughs> so, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. yeah. And, uh, You don't mind? Oh, I don't know. Lovely lyrics. I don't know what you're. She's still going on about something. I think you're back in there. Um, in the in the chat there, but I'm trying to think about anything else. So yeah, and they're giving you the chemo before the surgery. Yeah, chemo first. Surgery mm -hmm. second. Yeah. And My how how, how awesome. long do you have to do the chemo for? I do four rounds of the first one. So it's, I'm on the regimen I'm going to be on is ACT. And I'll be doing the A and the C for the first four sessions, which are usually spaced about three weeks apart. Give your body time to recover enough to get it again. Take talk, then, take a hike. Um, and then, yeah, I, then I do the C and the T. And yeah. TikTok, um, they are appropriate because we we're discussing the surgery that someone was going to do on themselves. Plus, implants are relevant. If you get reconstruction, she's not getting implants. She's getting something else. So they were totally relevant to what we were discussing. Mm -hmm. But thanks for your negative input. We've, we've deleted you. Thank you. Okay. What, did, what did they ask? What did oh, they, they said that... Uh, that we should not be speaking of implants. They have nothing to do with this conversation, basically. And they have everything to do with this conversation because you have a choice to make, mm -hmm. okay? And I choose to use my own bad, mm -hmm. yeah, for lack of a better word, um, mm -hmm. to make new ones, you know? So that's the way it is. 
I could have had I could have had implants. Mm -hmm. I will have a temporary implant just right. because they're going to stretch the skin. You know, mm -hmm. it's not an expander. They're just going to put one in, and I'm I'm not overly ambitious in what I'm requesting. All I want is a B. That's all I want, and I always have been a little less than a, lot, a B. A lot of people don't talk about this part of it, and no. people genuinely like to know a lot of that stuff. Other people who are going through it that no one will talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. And it, I there's, think it's wonderful it's that you're willing to share. Law. Me too. Law says they, if you want to have reconstruction, then you have to do it. And mm -hmm. it doesn't cost you anything. We love you, Sharon. We want to hear everything. Yeah. I just want to say Sharon is one of the strongest women I've ever met and mm -hmm. she's going to beat this because Oh, yeah, she is. She's very determined, and we're all behind her. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yes, we are, Sharon. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. I, you know, it's my, I, mine is also, it's called um, Invasive Ductal Carcinoma. Um, high grade, Nottingham grade three, stage one, triple negative. And that's the bad part, triple negative. And that means that, right, it's not, it, it's not, uh, uh, hormone hormones yeah. are not uh, responsible for it, right? Or something right. like that? No, mm -hmm. there's no estrogen, there's no progesterone, I have 0%. As far as, as the test went, I came up totally zero. Some people will come up 12% and they'll still call them a negative. Mm -hmm. So you got to be like over a certain threshold, but mine was literally 0%, so... As far as, and they test, I had biopsies because I have two spots and they did four biopsies in each spot. That was lots of fun too. Mm. And um, yeah, and it came back triple negative, which wasn't, I didn't think would happen, but it did, so it did. That's the time, that sounds like right you would think it sounds good, right? Well, I usually, mean, usually negative is, is a good thing in medical stuff, right? Normally, normally, yes, yeah. But, yeah. But if you were, say, you were um, um, positive for estrogen, positive for progesterone, and then negative, the HR one, HER one or HER two, negative, that's the, probably the best, cat, you know, oh, combination yeah. you can have. So two positives and a negative, but mine's all three. Negative. Okay. Dr. Google has an awful lot to say about it, I'll tell you that. So. Right, and then, and what about that? Were you tested for that breast cancer gene? I was, and it came back that I do not have it. However, the triple negative part can potentially be something that could run in a family, so. Now, did you they, ever they, have a mother or sister with this? Aunt. An aunt? Aunt. Okay. Mm -hmm. My mother's sister. Yeah. This last thing I thought I'd get to tell you the truth. I just, hmm. I had too many friends that thought of this. Really? And they say one out of ten, but it, now they've changed it, and it's one out of eight. Get your mammogram slates. Yeah. One out of eight, and just because you have four friends that had it, doesn't it just mean that you can't? You know? Right. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't feel like I can catch a break. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when they do it, it's almost the equivalent of a tummy pop. And when you go back, like a couple months later, then they do, um, what's that called? Let's see, my brain's gone. Liposuction. They do liposuction and fill in whatever gaps need ah. to be filled in. So I get liposuction up. Liposuction, yeah. Yeah, they usually go for your hips. Like, okay, oh, fine. okay. Works for me. <laughs> yeah. For your inner thighs, is it looks fine. But, but then you got to wear all these ridiculous garments around. Oh, man, you know? Yeah. And how, and how, do, the, how do they the take it out of your stomach? They suck it out or they cut it out? They cut it out. 
they, the incision is crazy. It goes from your side to side, not hip bone to hip bone, your side to side. Ah. And then they take it out in that area. And then they pull the whole works down and sew it again. Oh, okay. So it is like a tummy tuck. Mm -hmm. And they don't go underneath to the muscle. They don't want to do that. They don't want to disturb your muscles. Right. right. So, yeah. But they already did that to you, didn't they? Or your nerves? They did something to... Didn't they already mess up your nerves on one side? Yes, yes. Three years ago. Maybe this one will fix it. Yeah, he cut a nerve in my, in my, uh, below my ribs or right in my ribs. And, uh, so my, the left side of my abdomen is semi paralyzed as a result. It was all the way, but I've gotten some feeling bad. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. And I'd rather not be doing it, but... Of course, yeah. Right. And... So. Just uh, amazing, like it's just... Because uh, I have a friend who's a nurse and like she would go... She has breast cancer in her family and she was only going every two years for mammograms and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't know. I've... No, get your mammograms. Yeah. You got in. Go and get them. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they're so much more sensitive and sophisticated than they used to be. Mine was, you know, right. something to mock me, but it's 3D. 3D, so. I think they even had, I think Ruff was even saying, did, did you say 4D? Or... Well... Or is it three? I don't know. Maybe I'm getting that mixed up with something else. The thing is, is that, and, and you can see them. You see it on the screen. I could see two spots from where I was standing where the mammogram's done. And I could look over my shoulder and see my films on the wall. Because so, they wanted to do more. Mm hmm. So they did eight more views. Right. And and when you still don't know when you start, right? No, I'm I'm waiting for the oncologist to call me because they want me to have an echocardiogram, but I had one about a year ago. And right. I don't know if that would be sufficient or they want me to get one now. So we'll see. Right. And because do you, do you have AFib? I do. You do. But I don't use anything to control it. You don't take a blood thinner? Uh-uh. See, my mother had it, and she had, she took a blood thinner. But I don't know. Mine isn't as frequent, maybe. Uh-huh. But, yeah, when I... The cardiologist says, well, you know, you're kind of in a gray area. So, you know, we can treat it, or we can just wait and see. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And I said, let's just wait and see, because I'm totally aware when it happens. So if it starts picking up, well, then they'll probably do something about it. But yeah. I don't well, I, I, I don't know. know. You probably routine. would be best to, prudent to just get one done, right? Yeah, I think so. Just it's not make, a big deal. No. no. Just to make sure. Yeah. Is it Spink still on panel? Are you still on the panel, It's Spink, or are you just in the chat? She's not here. She is. She's in the, she's in the chat. No, no, she's not on the in the chat. In, oh, in, oh, on in, the on panel, the, on the panel. Yeah. yeah. Did you schedule your mammogram, Al, or your MRI? Uh, not yet. I, he's going to do it the next time that I'm there. He already gave me a prescription for a colonoscopy. Oh, okay. And he's taking it. There's so much to do. When do you I go am. for the colonoscopy soon? As soon as I make the appointment. Oh. So soon. And I know De Debbie, Debbie just had one, and I know Ruff just had one, and um, 
mine scheduled, but well, mine's I, I was supposed to be in January. I've had mine scheduled for a while, but uh, it's April something. They couldn't get me in. I go I go every six months for yeah uh, either mammogram or a uh, ultrasound. Yeah, just do the ultrasound. Um. And Bink is supposed to go in for did Bink did you have yours? You're Chris Free. Would not oh, Chris Free, yeah, she went in and had one done. Heard me and she called she she just walked in. They she has a walk in mammogram, yeah. She did. She got up and she I went right it. in. Yeah. I was very good her. He did. Yeah. yeah. And they wanted her to follow up too because they weren't sure what they were saying. And it wasn't what they thought, which was a good thing. Mm hmm. Yeah. Bink, did you schedule yours? You still have to schedule your colonoscopy too. You have to watch your video. It's so crazy. You may as well do them like one, the, one day and one the next, or two days apart or something. That's the best one. I can't believe she has to um, watch her video to, to have a colonoscopy. And then you say University Hospital is our nearly one year for appointments for hubby's colonoscopy oh university hospital is out oh really they're a year backed up on those wow wow farm wife that's crazy is there another place you can go hmm I do realize these things are important now. Oh, yeah. Sure, I didn't see that. Yep. And Sharon, you're so brave and so strong. And I love you so much, and we're all with you through this whole I, thing. And I know you're going to make it. I, I know you are. Mm -hmm. The heat okay. doesn't do me in. Yeah. It what? Yeah, the chemo doesn't do me in. It won't. It won't. What, Bink? Bink. I think Bink's behind in the... Um, I think so. In the video. <laughs> Have you just it's, come up? <laughs> it's like that lady, that one that said... I'm gonna kill you <laughs> and we're like what and then we realized that I, that was said earlier in the video in a very interesting <laughs> way about something else oh my gosh farm if he has to be admitted to the hospital for his colonoscopy because of his health issues oh and that's wow. the only one wow wow do they have wow. him on a cancellation list or something yeah get a list get on the list that's crazy they're making same well, now I think Vicky's caught up because she said, I will pray, pray for him, farm wife. Yes, definitely. That's California healthcare. What? No, she's not in California. She's in not in California. Abby? No, uh, farm wow. wife. Oh. She's in Missouri. Show me state. Yeah. I always think New York should be the show me state. I know. <laughs> I don't know how we're, we're not. We're the Empire State because of the Empire, Empire State, State building. Right. What is today? The 13th? Today the 13th? That's wow. Well, this is almost a half of March. It's almost over. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Uh oh, who'd we lose? Yes. The hospitals, oh, the hospitals in Kansas? Oh. And there's not another hospital that. Wow. That's terrible they're making them wait that long. 
Oh man, yeah. Yeah. My gosh. That's why I wondered if he could be seen somewhere else. Yeah, no, I don't know. That's a, that's a shame. Yeah. It really is. Interesting farm life. I've never seen so many doctors in such a short space of time before in my life. Yeah, a lot of doctors. Oh, man. They go to a the team. team. They give you a team. You even have a facilitator on your team. Yeah. That is not really telecap. I know it's not. I like to think it the facilitator. It's not the facilitator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did they assign you a social worker as well, Sharon? No, not that I know of. Unless it's written down somewhere and I been told. Unless that's the facilitator's job. And someone Could was be. saying a nutritionalist, do they do anything like that? Yeah, they do. Okay. If you want. I've been researching that too. I do homework. Mm hmm Yeah. Basically what they tell you is to avoid, you can have red meat, but avoid it on the whole. Um, really? And, yeah. And... Hmm. They, they like you to be on a semi plant uh, plant based diet. Right. So, beans, beans, peas. So, yeah, I was going to say sometimes they like you on a macrobiotic diet. I don't know what that is. And I, th I heard you, you have to be careful. You have to, like, it's easy, like, you miss, oh, I don't feel like eating or something. And then even a difference of, like, three to four pounds can adjust. I mean, can uh, make the, because the, the chemo's calculated to work on your weight. Correct. If your weight fluctuates by even, like, four pounds, I was reading some woman said, it can make it, yep. like, too, str too strong. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So they said you've got to keep, like, careful track of your weight, and they want you to keep eating no matter what so you don't lose weight so that everything mm -hmm. i guess otherwise you've got to tell my sister-in-law has um blood work and she gets weighed before every treatment right. yeah me too guys i'm right here i'm gonna go and eat some eating chips and you still need to find out about the auto infused nausea medicine that they put on put on you the day of your chemo so it kicks in the next day. It automatically kicks in. Oh, wow. All right. Did you say hang on? Who, me? Yeah. Oh, I was talking to my concierge. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying hang on to us. Yeah. No, so. I will. <laughs> I hate you guys. Right. And, um, and then they, there were the tips of eating ice chips and popsicles during the chemo. That yeah. uh, alleged supposedly uh, pre prevents uh, the mouth sores and the biotin mm -hmm. mouthwash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And taking the anti nausea stuff right, even right away, even if you don't they, need they it. They premeditate you with it. Mm -hmm. or they can take blood out of my port. They can give me medicine in my port. Um, so they they told me not to get any vaccines for now. Any live vaccines. I think they're back. Any live vaccines. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So, so shingles is out. I can't get the shingle vaccine. Right. I want to blind out. What is that um, chemo cap? What is that? They put um, ice on your head? The cold cap. The cold cap. Is that what it is? The chemo cap uh, or something? Yeah, it's cold. And what you do oh. is um, they they put it's like that ice in it or something. Right. It goes on about 20 minutes before you get chemo, and then you sit there for another half hour or so after you're done with it. And then you can go home, but... It, it prevents you from losing all your hair, but the problem is, is that you can't, you can only wash your hair. You cannot dry your hair. You cannot style your hair. You can't do anything to your hair other than wash it. And you can't even dry it. You just wow. wash it. Yeah. Well, so I, but when you wash it, you're like, are you, don't you? Yeah, like I mean, rub yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. So I'm gonna lose my hair. That's all there is to it because I don't want to go around looking like a wearing my wearing a fright wig because I can't fix my hair. But it doesn't prevent them that cap thing from losing all their hair because they lose. From what I was reading, I think some lady said she she didn't like she lost enough of it that I think she eventually just stopped doing it. Uh oh, she gave up on the cold I, I think so. I think that's what I was reading. That, like, it doesn't, it's just not that it's, I don't know, maybe I've got it wrong. I don't know. But I thought she said something like it didn't save at all. And then it ended up that um, it only kept a certain amount. So she just decided to. I got the name of that nausea medicine, either by patch or injector that they can put on you. Mm hmm. I have one behind my ear right now. It's it's called New Lasta. New Lasta is shots that you give yourself in order to produce um, bone marrow. Because I had to New do that Lasta. for a day. New Lasta, the injector one is designed to deliver the dose over 45 minutes, approximately 27 hours <coughs> after your chemo. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, because you're right. Oh, one's, a, one's a patch and one's an injector thing on the skin that yeah. automatically kicks in mm -hmm. to hold off nausea. Yeah, but they also pre-medicate you through the IV before you have um, chemo. And sometimes they'll put more than one in there. Yeah, but this is for afterwards, for the days coming up. Right. Yeah. The, the worst day is day two. Day one day you get it. Day two is the worst day. Although you feel pretty crummy at the end of day one, too. But day two is the worst. And then they like to see you slowly cover throughout, you know, the first week. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind, that's for sure. Yeah. I just want to get this going. Show I kept, on. Sharon, I kept stressing to him in the chat that you could not feel yours. I could not what? That you could not feel yours. Feel what? You didn't have a lump to feel. Oh, no, I couldn't. No, nobody who's like six different people have not been able. They know where it is. They still can't feel it. Yeah. So let that be a little something to think about too, because if you think you you will pick it off when you're in the shower or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you a little secret. I discovered too late, mind you. Um, 
I used to look in the mirror in the bathroom to see if there was any dimpling or anything like that. I did that religiously. And uh, after I was diagnosed, I was in the other bathroom where I keep all my hair things. And uh, I was getting ready to dry my hair, and I was wearing a towel, and I just pulled the towel off, and I was going to put, you know, some stuff, underwear on. And I didn't, I hadn't turned the light on in the bathroom, so I only had the light coming in from the window. And all of a sudden, I had my arm up, and there they were, little puckers on the side. Can't see them with your bright bathroom lights. Turn the lights off and stand in front of it at the daytime, take a hard look at yourself. I'm serious. Wow. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see any yeah, anybody have any questions? So you can totally have it without feeling it at all. Yeah. What was itchiness? Uh, yes, yeah, it, that was my symptom. And a little pain. Every once in a while I'd have pain. Right there in that spot. But I didn't know. I could never find anything there. there so I just, spot. And you were itchy on your breasts? Yeah, only one. What about your nipples? Mine are... It, they, they didn't pull in. How's that? Um, but were, they, were they itchy? What? Were was they itchy, itchy, she said? No. No. Okay. No, it was the whole. Okay. But if the, if your nipples are itchy, you might want to uh -huh. get it, get that mammogram. Or whatever. Do, well, that, do you do you remember some things that you were talking about, Al, with things that you've had go on? Oh yeah. <laughs> it sometimes can be a side effect of breast implants, the um, joint pain, the fogginess different things like that. I've been looking at some of that when I've been looking at Sharon's stuff here lately. That's yeah. something to talk to the doctor about if there could be anything with the number of years because they're approaching a certain age. Okay. Yeah. That, that if you have any the implants. I got them in 2013, my second, no, 2014, my second set. It listed a lot of issues that you were having. Yeah. Did, did they um, have a time frame every, for you to change them? Every 10 years. Well, supposedly. you're at 10 years right now. There you go. Yeah, well, I, um, I have, we couldn't get to all my symptoms. We could only get to like a quarter of them. And he said we would do the next quarter the next time. But I would have to come back in two weeks. Three weeks, which is two weeks now. Just ask him by chance with, I'm sure you'll look it up after this about with what you're experiencing. No, I'm could not it, getting into it with Dr. Google. <laughs> could it be a side effect of implants? Okay, that's a good idea, Kevin. Because it listed a few things that you've talked about. Okay, thanks. Why do you have to get them changed every 10 years? Do they start to disintegrate? They do. Oh, no. That's great. They, they lose their... Can't wait. They, they degrade. Mm -hmm. They feel yeah. like that's a safe time. Yeah, sometimes like the... Um, the saline ones are okay, but the gel, they can rupture. You do. Oh, no. Okay. no, mine mine look okay. But you don't know that what's in the bag what's is what's off. happening inside, right? You don't know what's leaching from the material that the bag is made out of. Right, you're right. And it listens from the 
as you get yeah, them to get better. Kind of some of the issues that you that you've had, right? From joint pain to different things, right? Yeah, because it's a serious thing. And you can't get a mammogram with them, right? Yeah, I can. But he can send me for a mammogram. Oh. Yeah, he will. We have a gun. <laughs> oh, he can send me for a mammogram. Okay. okay. Yeah, he can prescribe that. Absolutely, he can. He prescribed a colonoscopy already. No, but I mean, with mm -hmm. the implants, it doesn't obscure the do view. You have to, do you have to have an ultrasound MRI? Yes. Or of the breast, right. Oh, that's what, yeah, that's what you mean. Okay. Oh, that's what we meant, a regular one. Because uh, it could burst your, your um, yeah. implant if they squeeze it too hard. Right. Mm -hmm. did, they, did they still squeeze it that hard, though, or did they change yeah, it? Yeah, no, they squeeze them. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can practice by having one of your neighbors. Don't lay down on the pavement, let them back a car over. You, so. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Is it that bad? I guess it all depends on, on your pain threshold and if you have any uh, other issues. But to me, I always go like this. I, they always try, they make so many apologies to me and I go, please stop apologizing. Do whatever you have to do. I want you to get the best pictures you can. Exactly. Don't worry. Right. Just do it. Don't apologize to me. Just do it. Okay. My right. favorite part is they say, don't move as if you could. And then they tell you, right. don't breathe <laughs> now. Yeah. Well, they'll say, well, you can get, you know, you can breathe normally until I tell you not to. Okay. Hold your breath. I wish they could do both at the same time. Yeah, that breathe, would be I breathe the whole time. The worst part is the positioning on that machine because you oh. never feel like you No, this hip in. No, that hip. No, put this one like this. No, put right. this like this. Right. Yeah. No, put your arm over here. The worst was the uh, was the MRI. Right that for was... you, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I had the MRI. I didn't think that was bad at all. Did you have to lay in the table? Yeah, there was no smushing, though. Yeah, but Sharon had a rest on her cheekbones. No I had, yeah, I saw marks on my cheekbones. My whole face, my whole head rested on my cheekbones. And my whole torso rested on about a little over an inch piece of metal that was covered with padding of some kind, which was highly ineffective. Mm. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to want another one of those for quite some time. Right. Ever. I'm here yet. Is that the same way you have to do it? You have to lay in that table, though? Yeah. I never thought of it as bad. Well, I mean, it might be different for you. A mammography was worse, Sharon, right? Mm hmm? A mammography is worse than now. Oh, no. I would do a million mammograms before I wanted to do that. Oh, really? Well, in, in all full disclosure, when they were trying to get me hooked up with this thing, huh. they wanted one hand up high and they wanted the other hand up high and I just gotten my left hand up there and oh. the lady grabbed my right one and pulled it all the way up oh, and he says, oh, oh my god something happened to my rib I don't mm -hmm. know if I cracked it if I bruised it something oh, but man it's, it's been bad gosh is, did you have your port in yet when did I have that done no she had that done before the port Friday. Oh, good. Thank God. I had it done on Wednesday. Good Wednesday. Maybe it was Wednesday. I don't know. You had your wait. You had your port on Monday. I got my port yesterday. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Right. And you had that MRI. I think it was last Friday, wasn't it? I thought it was Friday, but Kevin thinks it was Wednesday. It might be. That's when oh, you I met with your team of doctors was on Wednesday. Oh, was it Wednesday? She had the MRI? I don't know. Oh. No, I just the, I had the MRI after I met my team. I think it was Friday. I think it was Friday, too. Okay. Do you mean Kevin might be wrong? Why? Well, Kevin wrong? He happens occasionally. 
At this point, no one's shocked by it. <laughs> it has lost its shock value. <laughs> has the meatloaf coming? Good. Oh, you're not having meatloaf tonight. That's right. No, I had a cheeseburger, and the meatloaf is mixed up and in the refrigerator. <laughs> There you okay. go. It'll go in tomorrow. Has anybody in the chat ever had meatloaf cupcakes? <laughs> Just put a one if you've ever had meatloaf cupcakes. That's... Meatloaf made in a muffin pan. Meatloaf made <laughs> in a muffin pan. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. And if you've never had meatloaf made in a muffin pan, does that sound appealing to you? And would it sound more <laughs> appealing to you if they called them meatloaf cupcakes and they put... Um, frosting of mashed potatoes on ew. top. Ew. Oh, the frosting is mashed potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it sounds great if it's mashed potatoes, corn, and cheese. Ashley has had meat, meatloaf mu muffins. <laughs> cupcakes. Meatloaf muffins. Meatloaf with meat mittens. With potato frosting. With uh, and corn sprinkles. And corn sprinkles. Corn sprinkles. That would be delicious, I think. And I and love meat bread. Cheese. Oh, jeez. Love sweetball. Right. A1 steak sauce on top. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so uh, hungry. The meat muffin but shop. <laughs> I'm just having chips, but they didn't satisfy me. Like Ashley knows what meat muffins are. Yeah, she likes her meat muffins. Right, Ashley? What did you say? They took... Oh, they took out 10 scallops. Collops. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, he said, <laughs> hold on a minute. Why? <laughs> he said scallops, so I thought we were talking about food. I am sorry. Um, I had a call. <laughs> I didn't see that part when I, five years ago. I'm due for another one. Oh, oh five God. years ago. I'm surprised they let you go five years ago because they only let me go three years and they took out five. Um, he should have he went six months for a repeat, having 10. Really? Uh, yeah, right. I don't think so. Really? With having 10 polyps, he should have been going back. But every wouldn't, it, six wouldn't it depend on if they were just um, benign polyps or if they were precancerous polyps or if, like what? I, I have no clue on that, but I know that you go back for repeats till that number of polyps is down. Oh, because I had five the first time, right? And then they said three years. And then three years when I went back, they said, oh, it looked good. There was just one tiny little one. And then now the they said five years. If I had if I had 10, I'd be going yearly. Hmm. Interesting. It's funny. What I thought. No, it was funny one. Scallops. Oh, I, did, I, I thought yeah. you were talking about food. I didn't see what was before that. Sorry. Room. The Room website see. said not due for a memo until August. Oh, okay. So you are you had uh, one, yeah, once a year, right? Yeah. So, but you could schedule it now because sometimes they like take a long sure time to get in. Sure could. I do that. I'd schedule it just mm -hmm. to make sure. They, you don't don't get pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Look, well, they what, got, yes, look yes. what it means it's about meatballs. Let's see, where is that? Mean? Hi, Carolyn. Yes, yummy meatball cu meatball cupcakes sprinkled with nutmeg. Ooh, dear <laughs> Mu uh, nutmeg well, I and like meatballs. I don't know. Um, not like that idea. Meatballs. Sorry. Yes, that's the only time I, I use nutmeg. I'm not a big fan of the I Swedish thought. meatball. We, we make a topping with ketchup, nutmeg, brown sugar, and a little dry mustard. Oh, I like Swedish meatloaf. That sounds good. I don't like um, meatloaf. And I am on like vacation meat. with all these lovely people. Yeah, I like a dry uh, meatloaf. You yes, you are. You like hell, I'm going. From hell or high water. Yeah. Ashley says it's going to be two years. Really, Ashley? That's weird. Two what? years since what? Last was August 20. Well, then you're due, girl. Yeah, you're due, girl. I'd, yeah. make, I'd make the appointment now. 
I'd call them in the morning if they're might, not, if they're might, might be based on her age is why they're pulling that. No, I don't think so. I mean, she's of age. And I think let me say Delia Max beef taquitos are not good. Yuck. Deli Max. I don't even know what those are. Mm-hmm. You love stuffing in your meatloaf. Stuffing? You oh. mean like bread stuffing in your meatloaf? Yes. Yes. You know what I do? We, uh, we used to roll a meatloaf. Mm-hmm. You flatten it like on saran wrap. Yeah, like the jelly roll. You roll it up. Exactly. And you put your, your stuffing in the middle and you roll it up and bake it like we that. Do. So we do sick. ham, cheese, and broccoli and then roll it up. Oh, all right. I am. I do that with ground you pork. You are 54. Ashley, did she say she's 54? Yes. Well, girl, uh, you and I are very similar, even though I'm 29, okay? But uh, <laughs> you should be going yeah. every year, okay? Even though I'm 29, I know that you should be going every year. Yeah. Actually, I think it's from the age of 40. Is it? I believe they it is. Back. Uh, they backed it up to age 40. I've had one mammogram in my life. I mean, I'll tell you what, you know who are the people who die of breast I'm cancer? Die of the breast. Or who have the uh, sadder outcomes is uh, the people under the age to get a mammogram. So that's why it's so really important. Well, that's what they're saying about colon cancer, too. Yeah, I know. That it's now striking younger people, and they're uh, thinking of pushing back the um, guidelines. They made it to 45 instead of 50. Yeah, but they're saying they might even be prudent to do it younger than that. Yeah. Makes sense. I think that's a lot with the diets and everything that people are eating today. Horrible. Really eat the way I eat is horrible. It's terrible. Terrible. I need to yeah, Ashley, I would call. I would call your your doctor's office tomorrow and say, "What's up with this? You had your first mammo this year." Okay, let me um hold on one second. I'm going to I guess get. Everybody's talking about food, so I'm going to get a um a small salad, not really a salad at all. Um, I can't call it that. Exactly. I was, I get, was looking at some. If you don't have any polyps, you don't have to go back for 10 years. I don't. I know. That's why Scooter, I think she doesn't have to go back for 10 yeah. years. And I think Jimmy, too, didn't have to go back for 10 yeah. years. And no. I don't want to give up TMI, but when I go potty, sometimes I have a little blood in it. Oh, yeah, no. That could be a hemorrhoid, though. So. That what? Normally, if you have bright red blood, it's another issue. You worry about if you have dark. Right. Or black. No, I don't have dark. I don't have dark. Normally, if it's red, it's um, like a hemorrhoid. Something else. Yeah. I think it's a hemorrhoid. You still need to get checked. Yeah. I'm going to get a colonoscopy. I'll be okay. I'm probably do as well. Let's all go for on air colonoscopies. Oh, I already had mine. Let's all do it together. Like, when didn't Oprah do that? We did that the last time. We had uh, Nanette had her first colonoscopy. Sharon had one. I had one. Katie Couric went live with her. Katie Couric did. That's right. I would go live because, with mine if they let me. Did she lose her husband at a young age? Yeah, I would, yes. go, li- I would but, go live with mine, but I don't think they'll let me. I would go live. I'm not sure. It would be a liability. They would pull something with HIPAA or something.
That sounds like so good with the cupcakes with A1 stick sauce, mashed potatoes, and corn on top. Get big enough muffin tents to make it Now, Mary Ann's talking about a situation she had in the chat that hers was bright red and she happened to be bleeding internally. Oh, the Mary Ann? No. Know Mary Ann? But normally. Normally, if you have bright red blood, unless you've had a diverticulitis or a abscess or something burst. Well, I have really bad constipation. And you probably have diverticulitis. Great. What don't I have? <laughs> or, um, I'm sure I have everything. <laughs> Asthma, COPD. L panel was low, so that could be like anything bad. That could be some really bad stuff. Um, hi, Marianne. Terrible symptoms. Green beans can be the candies, uh, candles on the cupcake, yeah. Mm. I like corn. I love corn. It's like my favorite vegetable. Is it? Yeah. Corn in the cob. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. You maybe you could take um it's hard to beat fresh tomatoes. You maybe you can put one Brussels sprout in the center. I love Brussels sprouts. I watched a crispy potato salad that they've been making. Yeah. That they, that they boil these small potatoes mm -hmm. and then they Mash them, and then they brown and crisp them up in the oven, mm -hmm. and then they kind of mix it according to their potato salad recipe. Whether you add bacon or or whatever you add in your potato salad recipe, and it looked really good. Oh, they fixed it, and you had to have two blood transfusions. Yeah, I know. How are you Great. feeling now? Do what you know where the bleeding was coming from? What a conversation, right? One minute yeah. we're talking about mashed potatoes, next minute it about hemorrhoids, and back to mashed potatoes. If it makes people go and get tested, then it's good. We're just dealing with real life. Oh, I know. I'm fine. I'm just laughing about how um, it's shifting yes, back and forth. Channel. They have the yeah. best channel on YouTube. And I'm eating a... Some green beans with balsamic while we're talking about this. Oh, that sounds so good. I just have chips. That's all I have. We're ready to eat. I don't feel like making anything. Cornbread, corn cakes with brown sugar. Oh, you're making those now, one eye? <clears throat> Cracker Barrel has good corn muffins and biscuits. Sure, I good. love Jiffy Cornbread Mix, but my grandmother would call it cake. Oh, I just bought some of that because I thought it was it's nostalgic. Sweet. It's sweet. I, I like Jiffy Cornbread Mix because I do a meat mixture of like a barbecued hamburger type meat. It's really like right. a taco bite. And then I like to pour Jiffy cornbread mix over the top of that and bake it, and it's really good. Huh. I love you know what I don't one? have? Diabetes, which I am shocked. <laughs> you don't know what <laughs> you either. Came back normal. I'm stunned. I have high cholesterol. Do you? Yeah. That I'm not shocked. Is it... High because of the bad cholesterol or high because of the good cholesterol? I think the bad. Oh. <laughs> Normally it's high because of the bad. The good stuff though. My, my number No, my mine number is high because of the good and they say it's fine. My they say my good is off the charts. So is mine. And they say it's a good thing. Because he always yeah. say your cholesterol, if somebody just reads the total number, it's oh it's it's high. 
But then when they look at the individual parameters of it and your bad cholesterol is super low and your, your good cholesterol is really high. Oh, maybe it's the good kind, but I doubt it. <laughs> Hard to say. You have to look at your blood results in the HDL and the. Uh, I can't get in the portal, as usual. You can't get in oh, there. No, I can only the, the nurse only told me a couple of things. Yes, it's not so much the total number, it's w the um, percentages of each. I wish I could get in there. HDL, LDL, and mm -hmm. triglycerides. Yeah. I think my triglycerides are high. Your good cholesterol is low? you got to get that higher. Um, Mine's on a graph, so I can look at it and I'm see. I'm getting it better. I'm weak, but I'm getting stronger every day. Stronger every day, Marianne. That's what you got to go for, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. Very good. If you can get the good cholesterol up to 50, that's good. I think mine's right. way higher than 50. Yeah, if you can I think get mine might to... be like 200. Yeah. So I'm not joking. One eye is saying his good's in the 20s. Wow. That's and impressive. And I think you can get it up to at least 50. That's a good number. That's impressive. I wonder if I can see what my good one is. I'll find out when I go. I'm going to see if I can go in my thing and see what my good cholesterol is. Let me try to get into my portal. Marianne said her life alert button saved her. Oh, that's good, Marianne. I, I should get one of those because I live alone. I think I had it done at. Uh... Oh, my father, I can't get up. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. The other night I thought I was a goner. Oh, there we go. Oh, this one. Is this it? I think so. Um, log in. Okay, log in. Test results. All right, let's see. Um, it's my little... I think I've had a different one from this. Okay, this one is from, when is this one from? I have to go on my other portal for my other one, but this is from 2022. My HDL was 83. Okay. That's really good. It is, because it says HDL, it says um, less than 40 is high risk factor, but greater than or equal to 60 is a low risk factor. That's good, Carolyn. When I get my results, I'll read them to you guys. Okay. But no, let me see. I think it's it's gone even higher than that. So I thought that this one had the most up to date one, but I don't think it does. Let me see. I think I have to go to my other one. Is the uh, this patient portal? Okay. Patient. Uh, no. What do they call it? They call it the. Um, Come on. No, here we go. 
Everybody's so quiet. You don't have to be so quiet. No, all of a sudden. Okay, appointments. And. Um, passed. Okay, so let's see. It'd be. Probably. This one. Okay, so medications, procedures, I thought it was so interesting to go and find my stuff. Guys can talk. Okay. <laughs> I'm just no. reading about a low, a, a low L panel. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> a low L LDL. Sharon. Um, yeah. Sharon snow removers in chat, and she said she just caught up on two times speed. Prayers for Sharon, and remember, chemo is your friend. Um, prayers okay. for you too, snow remover. How are you doing? Let's see here. Medications, procedures, result, right? No. Uh, where the heck? I know I've seen my stuff over here. Where did they put it? booked. Okay. Maybe if I just keep going back here. Yeah. That's crazy that I, I, I've looked at this a thousand times. I looked at clouds. That's so weird that it's not letting me. Sharon Snow Remover said that she's doing good. When I had my port taken out, the scar looks like a cross. Oh, oh really? Cool. Okay. okay. No one finding stuff. Let's see. Isn't that funny? That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just hurts so much right now. It's terrible that it hurts like that. I wish there was something they could do for you. It should increase your pain medication, or is it really high as it is? No, it's not high. I think it's just the initial trauma from having the port mm -hmm. put in. Yeah, yeah, you only were done yesterday, right? I see the tunnel under your skin. To get there, and I'm sure that's it can still give you more pain medication in the meantime. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be more. I mean, just for a few days. And they're so stingy with that medicine, it makes me sick. I think that it'll feel better, you know, every day. Yeah, of course. Bothers me with all you're going through. It. You don't need to be in pain. Trying to find my. 
so weird that I can't find my stuff here. Mission. It's so weird that I can see that, but I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'll worry about it later. Okay, where am I? Oh, let's see. Um. <clears throat> What a trooper, yeah. Yep, she's a very strong woman as well. So are you, Marianne? Absolutely. So strong while well, needing blood two blood transfusions and um, yeah, that's supposed to be really weak and that's crazy. I used to picture the chemo as Pac-Man chomping through my blood eating the cancer cells. Pac-Man, <clears throat> Would anyone like a few trivia questions before we do the yes. word cookies? Let's see. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, hold on a minute. Those are the ones we hey. need. We played the other night. Let's see. Well, I, I want to answer in the chat, but but then you hear the question before then, I and they know, go and it's I not know. fair. I know. I just have to chime in on the panel. Okay. Okay. What, no, I'll answer in the this chat. This is for the, I'll answer in the chat. But you can't see. Then you, you can't, can't be on panel. You have to leave. See, because what happens here, is you hear the question first, and even though you put it in the chat, you're before them. It so you have to, to answer on the panel, time. but this is for the chat. What okay. Ontario city is nicknamed the Hammer? Margo, there's one for you. <laughs> I'm not in the chat. Well, I bet you snow so removal. Know that one. I bet you snow remover will know it. Oh and yeah. Me. No, snow remover said cancer is a word, not a sentence. Mm. Sure, it is. Snow, do you know this? What Ontario city is nicknamed the Hammer? Or ME? Or White Angel? Snow remember says Sharon, the port was uncomfortable at first. Mm 
There, White Angel, got it. You're in Ontario, Liz Tops? I didn't know that's where you were. I don't know why I thought you were in the UK or something. Really weird. Hey, White Angel. It is Hamilton, okay? Hamilton. Okay, this is for the panel. What was the name of the first Nine Inch Nails album? Oh, boy. <laughs> Nine inch nails. And he says lots of love, hugs, and prayers for all those going through difficult times and health challenges. Yes, absolutely. Pretty hate machine. Correct. All right, I'm, Kevin. I'm impressed. And I said, you got it, White <laughs> Angel. I did. Okay, ready? Uh, this is for the chat. What word was coined to describe a square shaped fingernail? with oval edges, round edge, squoval, or stubs? Which is the right word? I know that one. Well, you can't answer it, it's for the chat. So what word was coined to describe a square shaped fingernail with oval edges? Is it round edge, a squoval, or stubs? Well, then you can put it down. We're playing a trivia. This is your time to go. You're in the chat. You can answer. You're oh, all together as a team in the chat. No, I'm talking to White Angel. White Angel needs to worry about driving. She pulled over to answer that. Oh, be careful, White Angel. <laughs> You're going to get arrested. Isn't oh, that White illegal Angel. in Canada? Be careful. But I was answering a trivia question, officer. Somehow I don't think they would go for that. Emmy says round edge. Emmy says round edge. I'll wait till a few other people answer. Right, Angel, are you going to take a guess or answer? Anybody in the chat can answer that about the fingernails. You were almost arrested for development before. <laughs> um, what word was coined to describe a square-shaped fingernail with oval edges? Is it round edge, squoval, or stubs? A glass of wine. What? <laughs> a glass mm -hmm. of wine. That doesn't fit the answer. No. Okay. Well, I don't see the answer yet in the chat. So does the panel know the answer to this? What word was coined to describe a square shaped fingernail with oval edges? Is it round edge, squoval, or stubs? Squoval. That is correct. Okay. And then you guys get the next question because that you stole that one. The exploits of what rock band are described in the unauthorized biography Hammer of the Gods? What rock Last band is rock that about? Western. The exploits of what rock band are described in the unauthorized biography Hammer of the Gods? Well, MC. Right. <laughs> no. Hammer of the Gods. Let's see. No, you can't. You can't look it up. Motley Crue. Nope. Oh, okay. Nope. Here's a, here's a nice piece of information. Snow never had any nausea. Wait, snow. Oh, right. good for you, snow. Awesome. Wow. That's I'm awesome. Squirrel. Well, White Angel, you got to be a little quicker on the draw there. But Squovels is the correct answer. Anyway, uh, the rock band was Led Zeppelin. Now this is for the chat. 
about how many patients were seen in U.S. emergency departments in 2005 for nail gun related injuries. Was it 13,000, 28,000, or 52,000? How many people were seen in U.S. emergency rooms in 2005 for nail gun related injuries? 13,000, 28,000, or 52,000? Is that the chat or the panel? It's the chat. You, you can get, hi, Roth. You get a multiple choice there. That's a tough one. It could be any of the three. 13,000, 28,000, or 52,000. Multiple choice. You know what I would guess? White Angel says 52,000. Uh, Holly got it right at 28,000. Very good. Good job. Very good. 28,000. Is that right? And my blind start said I was one of 52,000. You mean 28,000? Snow Remover got it right at 28,000. Very good. Okay. Now, this is for the panel. What, okay. finger, what figure skating champion got nailed for her involvement in the, in the attack of competitor Nancy Kerrigan? Tanya uh -huh. I know that was so easy. And That's what did so what did all of those questions have in common? One word. Which questions? We there's always a theme. What's the theme of all those questions? Injuries. Nailed. Oh. Nailed. <laughs> okay. All right. Now the next one is for the chat. In what U.S. state can you find a monument depicting an African-American family with broken chains at their feet? In what U.S. state? Oh. In what U.S. state can you find that monument with an African-American family with broken chains at their feet? I could guess that one. But you're not in the chat. I know. Well, I'm sorry, White Angel. That's the question. I just read them. <laughs> you have some very easy ones too. Hi, Mr. Electric. Mr. Electric. I think I know this one. Mm, rough says South Carolina. Any other answers? Lovely lyrics. I think you're behind in the chat. <laughs> but I'm going to say, Ruff, you're going to be embarrassed. <laughs> because the answer, does anybody in the uh, panel know the answer? Oh, this is oh White Angel Georgia. just got it. I will say, well, no, she's guessing two things. But Savannah, uh, Georgia is the answer Georgia. right yeah but it was their question she came up with it after um so here's what it says the inscription on the savannah statue celebrates the ability of african-american families to stand up together despite a history of slavery so that's your home state there uh, rough okay this is for the um panel what tough guy said in 2005 that he would shed his trademark gold chains in honor of the victims of Hurricane Katrina. Mr. T. T. Correct. Ingo, Ingo Bart Humperdinck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is for the um, chat. What was the first chain of hamburger restaurants? McDonald's. It's not your question. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's all right. It was wrong anyway. Okay. Okay. What was the first chain of hamburger restaurants? I think I know. Yes. 
I'm thinking of two places. I think I know. Come on, chatters. A and W, White Angel says. No, that's not correct. Nope. Sorry. Um, Albert and Walter? No. Uh, Rough and Ready, yes. White Castle. Yep. Actually, the first White Castle opened in Wichita, Kansas in 1921. I was thinking Barker. I was thinking Barker Chef. Oh, Burger I, don't Chef. I don't even never heard of that. Okay. Yeah. I said White Castle under my breath. I don't know. Okay. All right. This is for the panel. What novel features a chain gang getting teased by a car washing woman they call Lucille? Chain gang of what? It says, what novel features a chain gang getting teased by a car washing <laughs> woman they call Lucille? Chain gang. Is that a prison gang? Yeah. Yeah. Hack on the chain gang. Also a reminder on the cheese recall. Oh, yeah. So gentle. Sargento. Careful. Does the chat want to steal this this one? Do you know this in the chat? You can say it. Al Ryder. What? Al Ryder. No. What novel features a chain gang getting teased by a car washing woman they call Lucille? No idea. It's gonna be a western. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Think of my son. Mm. This is a hard one. Think of my son. Oh, Cool Hand Luke? Yeah. Okay. Cool Hand Luke is the answer. Now, the next one is for the chat. How are sunlight? Plants, grasshoppers, snakes, hawks, and fungi connected. How are they all connected? I Sunlight, I plants, grasshoppers, snakes, hawks, and fungi. Fungi? Yeah. F U N G I. Fungi. Fungenisms. Yeah. Do you call it fungi? Do you call it um, fungies? Fungenisms? <laughs> Photosynthesis? No. Fungi wouldn't fit in there. Fungi. Do you call it fungi? <laughs> Fungi. That's a plural of fungi. I know. A bunch of Japanese. Toe fungies. You don't want they don't all fly because the snake doesn't fly. Oh, it's a chat one. Oops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fungi. Yes. Funky fungies. Fungi. Fungus. <laughs> no, come on, stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Toenails. Fungus. You don't want it. Yeah. Deli mix. No, love the lyrics. No, it is, no, mm, a food chain. Okay, they all make up a food chain. Now, this oh, is for God. the oh, chat. How does that make up a food chain? They eat each other. Yeah. Bungee jumping? No, not bungee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Um, this is to the chat. What is the world's top grossing chain restaurant? McDonald's? No, this is not to the chat. It's to the panel. 
McDonald's? Correct. Okay. Glad we moved away from the fungi. All right. Let's see. Oh, what did all of those, did we have the, all of those have in common? There was chains. Okay, let's do this now. This is so easy. Okay, so here's a really easy one for you, White Angel. In chat, in what city did different strokes take place? The series oh, different strokes, it's so easy. So easy. It's not easy if you didn't watch it. Oh. True. You didn't watch Different Strokes? What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I had bigger fish to fry. <laughs> I love that show. Oh, they so cute. Uh, one eye blind and hearts at San Francisco. I think you're thinking of Full House. Rough and Ready okay. says Brooklyn. No. Nope. No. Nope. Close, but no cigars. New York, New York City. Okay, that's where it is. Um, Manhattan. Now let's go over here for the panel. For what film was Abigail Breslin nominated for an Academy Award? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Is that it? No. No? No. I think you're you're getting it confused. You have one word, correct? Sunshine? Mm-hmm. But there's two words before it. Little no, Miss no. Little Miss Sunshine, yes. Oh, she Miss played Sunshine. Olive. In Little oh, Miss yeah. Okay, now. Mixed it up. Here we go. This is for the chat. What early child star has a kitty cocktail named after her? Oh, that is so easy. That is so easy, you guys. If you don't get this, I'm going to be embarrassed for you. What okay. early child star okay. has a kitty cocktail named after her? Oh my goodness, that is so easy. If you guys don't get this, I'm closing this down. I know. A kitty cocktail. Um, Come on, Elle, you know this. Kitty cocktail. Yeah, but it's for the panel chat. I know, it? I know. I'm just saying, but she's like oh. really thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Chance. Come on, guys. This is so easy. Kitty cocktail. Should we give him a clue? Oh my goodness. No. Shirley Temple, there you go. All right, I was going to have to shut it down. How is okay. that a kitty cocktail? Because it's, it's what little kids drink. You want a Shirley Temple when you go to the oh, restaurant? I'm thinking that a kitty, like kitty, K I T T Y. Oh, my Lord. Okay. Oh. All right, now let's go to the panel. Who grew up on screen playing a wizard? They, um, what did they do? They bared it all on the stage of London and Broadway. Okay, who grew up on screen playing a wizard, then bared it all on the stages Daniel of London Daniel. and Broadway? Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel Radcliffe. I've seen him in that production. Daniel He's Wednesday. naked. Yes. Yeah, Daniel Radcliffe. His he role in Equus. Is it Equus? Yeah. Required nudity. Okay. All right. All right, now let's go to the chat. What authors The Secret Life of Bees was made into a film star starring Dakota Fanning? What authors The Secret Life of Bees was made into a film starring Dakota Fanning? So authors? they're looking for the author or of The Secret Life of Bees. That was made, that their book, The Secret Life of Bees, was made into a movie starring Dakota Fanning. They want the author of the book. I think I know that. 
Nobody look that up because I think I know it. Why do you obsessively watch it? You know what? That trial actually comes up when I'm done watching something, it automatically comes up on that trial. And if I fall asleep watching something, I will wake up and I'll be in that Daryl Brooks trial. It's crazy. I think I know this. I think I know this. I may be right. Okay. Anybody? I think I know it. The I'm chat? Involved, but do I think you, I'm right. Do you know who the, the author is? Chat? I might. All right, go ahead. Woody Allen? No. Sue Monk Kid. Okay. Uh, now, this is for the, the panel. What bad news bear earned an Oscar nomination for his role in Little Children? Oh, I love that movie, Little Children. Bad news bear? Yeah. Yep. Earned an Oscar nomination for Little Children. Little Children. Larry McNichol? Jackie Earl Haley. Okay, now. I've never got it. Never sorry. And the theme there was child stars. Okay, now this is for the chat. What country did Barack Obama visit on his first trip outside the United States as president? We have quite the lag. In two places. I'm going to finish these five questions, then we're going to do the word cookies. you guys know on the chat what uh, country? Will I please guess? No. I think he went to Great Britain. Will I please guess? Yes. For the chat. For the chat. I thought the she chat. said it's right. Is the no, chat. Oh, Liz Top's got it. Canada. Okay. I Very that good. First. Okay. Now this is for the panel. Who jumped on Oprah's couch and called NBC's um, Matt um, Lauer glib? Tom. Tom Cruise. That's correct, Tom Cruise. Okay, this is for the chat. What politician mistakenly said that President Franklin D. Roosevelt spoke about the 1929 stock market crash on TV. That's for the chat. <laughs> I don't know who it might be. <laughs> but it's probably too new of a game, so. No, this is this is a vintage game. Yeah. That I just opened. It's actually from like, I think 2009 or something. What year is it from? I think it's from 2008 or 9. Okay. Oh. No, Tom I don't know who it's going to be. They're going to say it is anyway. Mm, wrong, Liz. Oh, could he? Do any of you know it? George W. Bush? No. Nope. What, what was the question? It's a chat, though. Um, oh, it was a chat. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's what politician mistakenly said that President Franklin Delano Roosevelt spoke about the 1929 stock market crash on TV? Trump. 
from no. nope no I don't. It is Joe Biden. I knew it. Okay. Oh, I knew it. Next. But I was not going to say that because I thought the game was too old. Art Linklater. Well, no. <laughs> okay, here's, here's for the chat now. What Irish author mused, there is only one thing in the world worse than being talked about. And that is not being talked about. What Irish author said that? There's only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, and that is not being talked about. That's your question up on the panel. Hmm. It's our question? Yeah. Wendy oh. Williams. No. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't hear the whole question. Okay. What Irish author mused, there is, there is only one thing in the world worse than being talked about, not being talked about? George Bernard Shaw. Bernard Shaw. Mm -mm. <laughs> we said that at the same time, Sharon. Yeah. Um, let's see, Thomas. Who said that? I thought it sounded like it's pink. Uh, Thomas. See you, Thomas. Mm -mm. Oscar Wilde. Ah. Uh. Okay. Now. Patio furniture. <laughs> That's a good one, one eye. <laughs> okay. This is for the chat. What basketball player earned many, excuse me, uh, excuse, hold on, never mind. What basketball player earned infamy in 2004 for going into the stands after a fan who had hit him with a full drink cup? I might know if I get a chance. Okay. And I'm into basketball too. You're into basketball? Yeah, I like watching basketball. Oh. I loved the Nets. They were like my favorite when I was married. John loved them. My kids loved them. Paddle of furniture. In the mix. Do you guys know what that is? No, I don't. No, the chat is supposed to. Oh. Dennis Rodman? Nope. That was my answer. Oh. That would be an obvious culprit. <laughs> Does the panel know? Do you want to steal? Or Ron Artest. I've never heard of him. Okay, <laughs> this is for the panel. What is erythrophobia? Erythro? Yeah. Uh -huh. hmm. Erythrophobia. Fear of bones? Mm -mm. That's not a question, is it? That is your question. <laughs> Fear of numbers? No. Nope. Fear of math? Nope. I'll probably never get it. It's fear of blushing. Oh, man. Oh, I should have known that from Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Sharon, <laughs> we should have known that from Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> I know. Remember that girl that had fear of blushing? Yeah, I remember her. Yeah. <laughs> Has that not taught us anything? I know, right? Okay, I'm going to ask the chat this. What famous blue cheese is made with sheep's milk and named according to the province in, South e in southwest France? 
to its province in southwest France. So what famous blue cheese is made with sheep's milk and named according to its province in southwest France? I might know it if I get a chance. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, I know. It's making me hungry again. Me too. Roquefort? I think you're trying to say Roquefort? Yeah, that would be correct. Uh, that there. was my answer. Lovely lyrics. Now this is for the chat. I mean for the panel. How many blue men appear on stage in a blue man group performance? How many blue men in blue man group? Is it five? Five. Mm, no. No. Six. How many? Six. Mm, no. Yeah. Hey, Four. Man in a blue Three. Three is the right answer. Great job. Okay. okay. Next yeah. one is for the chat. What year saw the Blue Angels perform their first flight demonstration? Was it 1946, 1956, or 1966? What was the question? It's for the chat. But it's, I know. Okay. It says, what year saw the Blue Angels perform their first flight demonstration? 1946, 1956, or 1966? Blue Angels. I think I know that. Like, I have a good guess. Um, Mr. Electric says 1966. Um... Nope. Everybody said 1966. Okay. Then Emmy said 56. Nope. Mm -hmm. 46. There are lovely lyrics. Got it right. Okay. Now, uh, to the panel. The blue whale feeds almost exclusively on what tiny animal, the blue whale? Plankton. Nope. Oh, then it. And, um, I know what this is. The blue whale. I'll give you a hint that the blue whale can consume up to four tons of this tiny creature a day. Yum, yum, yum. Did you say four? Did you say four tons? Uh, yes. Salmon? No. Shrimp? No. She said tiny. Tiny. Teeny tiny. Tiny, tiny, toony, tiny. Shrimp? No. Snails? No. If you know in the chat, you can put it down. I got to be in red shirt. Okay, well, this is our last question, and nobody got it right yet, so the chat could put it up. Krill, there you go, Liz Tops. So you got Krill. Oh, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I heard you say shrimp. I heard you say plankton. I said krill. Oh, I didn't. Did, did anyone hear her say grill? I didn't. You have to speak louder into the microphone. Sorry. Okay. I did say grill. All right. Well, Let's have one more question each, please. Oh, boy. <laughs> this um, is so much fun. Yeah. We played a whole bunch of it the other night. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, I'm going to do that. Let's see if I'm a better question than that. Um, okay, let's do this one. All right, this is for the chat. The cone heads comes from which planet? Is it uh, Krypton? Orc? Mm -hmm. Or um, Remulok. 
easy. The cone heads on the cone heads on Saturday Night Live. What planet do they come from? Orc, Krypton, or Remulac? Mr. Electric says Orc. Orc says Holly. Remulac says Emmy, and Emmy is correct. Okay, this is for the chat. Whose okay. song, Saturday Night's All Right for Fightin', has been covered by both The Who and Nickelback? Whose song? Uh -huh. Whose song, Saturday Night's All Right for Fightin', has been covered by both The Who and Nickelback? So who's the original artist that's saying Saturday Night's All Right for Fightin'? AC Rollers? No, that would be S A T U R D A Y night. That's yeah. Um, this is Saturday night's all right for fighting. Saturday night's all right. All right, all right. No one on the no one on the panel knows who sings Saturday night's all right for fighting. No, I thought Rob Daltrey, but. Okay, does the chat know if you want to steal it? Who who is uh Mark is from Mark, right? Um who right who's the original artist of Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting? Saturday Night's All Right. All right, all right. Saturday Night's All Right. Oh okay. <laughs> Lovely lyrics. Do you know who sings it? The original artist? Oh, no. S A T U R D. That's the Bay City Rollers. Yes, I love those songs. No, but that's not the answer. She, she, it's Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. Saturday Night's All Right. All right, all right. You don't know? Really? Nobody knows this one. You're all stumped on this. Sir Elton Never John. And you should all be ashamed. Yes, okay. Elton John wrote that? Yes. Now it sounds no, familiar. no, he's the artist that sang it. Okay, let's go on and go to the chat now and ask them, what year did Saturday Night Live first air? Was it 1975, 1977, or 1970? Nine. So easy. When did Saturday Night Live first air? 1975, 1970, what did I say, 78 or 77? That's 79. Not fair. I wasn't born till 95. Well, you know, look at me. I'm only 29, but I know the answer. Mr. Electric, yeah. that's right, in 1975, correct. Okay, this is for the panel. What frequent okay. Saturday Night Live host released a bluegrass album called The Crow, now songs for the five-string banjo? Steve Martin. That is correct. Okay, for the chat. Who played the, um, what is this? the tubular character in Brian Fellow's Safari Planet on SNL? Do you know? Yeah, Brian yeah. Fellow, do you remember who Brian Fellow's was? Oh, remember Brian Fellow's? On Saturday Night Live, Safari Planet. Nope. Nope. Brian Fellows, you remember the host on that thing? No? I didn't like the old ones. Okay, who knows who played Brian Fellows, Safari Planet on Saturday Night Live? Do, 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 do. Who played Brian Fellows? Yeah. 
It's Tracy Morgan. Okay, now, hmm. the panels. Who appeared on Saturday Night Live as Angry Obama? Oh, what's his name? Probably Obama. Tracy, Tracy Morgan. Nope. I'm going with Obama. Nope. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. All oh. right. Now, that's enough. Now we have to play word cookies. Thanks, Carolyn. You're welcome. Okay, you get some sleep, lovely lyrics. We're just going to do the daily, and we're going to go get some sleep, too. It's been a quite a day. Word cookies time. Kevin's favorite time of day. Okay. Oh, we don't need a mega sale. No, we don't need that. Okay, I'll be ready. So let's do it March 13th. Do, do, do. Okay. It's a short puzzle. Yes, it is, right? I can't see it yet. Okay. It's not on YouTube yet, that's why. You might be a little behind, Dale. Yeah, I'm not, um, it's not on YouTube yet. I tried. Those don't work. And math doesn't work either, guys. Sorry. No, I'm not getting it. Carolyn, wait until you want to know what time the auction will be tomorrow. Um, I don't know. Probably like we did last week. We'll see. About like, um, let me see. Wait, tomorrow's the 13th. The 14th. Oh, yeah, 14th. I've got a presentation. Um, yeah, it'll probably be around just maybe seven something. Maybe then. <laughs> oh, oh, this is the one, yes. Oh, right. And let's see what else. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What do you hear are these? Every the words that I think are should be there are not there. I tried math, it's not there. I tried, oh, it's there, it's already there. Oh, maybe that. There we go. And, um, 
on. I know what it is. My mother had that word the other day. Well, what is it? H-M-M. -M. Oh, get out of here. What is that? Hmm? You're putting that in now? Hmm? That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> yep, it is. <laughs> And I put the other word in chat. Awesome. Okay. And we that was the end of the word cookies. Yes, it's the end of the word cookies. And thank you all for coming in. And keep the prayers coming for everyone, Sharon, Snow Remover, everyone that's dealing with issues and health issues or other challenges. And just... Uh, Pray for everyone and prayers for all of you that need it and pray for everyone that need it. And we will see you tomorrow. Love you guys. God bless and prayers. Okay, you are so welcome. Goodbye. Good night.